So I've got an account that uh, I I created, and it's it's basic. I, I don't have I haven't used any anything about it yet, really. Um, the big thing that I want to do as soon as possible, like I said, is I want to put my branding as soon as possible. I want to put a logo at some point. Notice it's actually more of a rounded rectangle. It's not exactly a rectangle. It's got rounded corners. So you want some sort of logo or icon there in a small space because notice just browsing some of these accounts food and wine and Google and New York Times food notice how it looks good in a small space if your logo is very ornate it might not look so good and also if your logo is um, is, is too wide it'll cut it off so don't be like the Chargers and get your logo cut off you want a square logo and notice it will also usually be behind a plain white background when it's on an actual tweet so again depending how you've designed your logo that might look weird or it might be part of the design part of the aesthetic like this account over here it's in the shape here with this negative space and then when it's over here it looks nice like it's floating there so however you put some graphic here, notice LA food over here is, is a photo of some food. Can't quite tell what it is, but it might not matter. It's food. It's a good representation of the logo, of the company that is. New York Times food and drink, they've got their classic Times font, so it's that. Patriot uh, Patron Tequila, well, I guess that's a, a B right there, although I think it's a little too ornate. You're, you're kind of losing some of the detail. So even something like that small is a um, is something to think about. Uh, quick overview of the different screens on Twitter. Uh, we should have the home screen, moments, notifications, and messages. Home screen will always orient you to get back to what are the latest tweets of the accounts that you're following. I'm following five, so they will show up there. Moments is something that Twitter added relatively recently probably within a year or so and what happened with what happens with moments is that it um, shows you what's going on what's the latest of everything that's that's happening because Twitter what I really like about Twitter is that it is immediate it is current it is unfiltered um, it's very valuable there are very few gatekeepers to reach an audience on Twitter so these moments are curated by Twitter where they feel these are the big topics of the day and such. Uh, as a, um, as a um, business, these might be valuable to look at for inspiration to see what are the trends and we'll talk about later how to jump on trends and hashtags and so forth to get followers. We've got notifications. Um, when you have a brand new account, there's really nothing here. But notifications uh, will tell you what's new with your Twitter. A number will appear on that bell. This is just like every other network who has followed you, who has replied to you, you know, people or companies interacting with you. This is going to be the place where you keep up to date with everything that's happening regarding your account and your activity. Messages, you can have private messages. You can have one-on-one -on -one conversations on Twitter because by default <coughs> whatever you write on Twitter is public. If I tweet something everyone will see it publicly by default, which I can change. You can make your business account private, although I usually don't recommend to have a private account on social media for a business. Obviously, if, if it's your own personal account, put it private. It's your content. But if it's a business account, I highly recommend to keep it public. The reason is, I'll make a note here, keep your business accounts public so more people can find you and follow you. You want to build that audience. You want to build that captive audience of potential customers. If you've got a private account, people won't be able to see what you're doing on Twitter or YouTube or whatever, and therefore they have less of an enticement to follow you. 
So more people will follow you if you're if you're public. And this also goes with my uh, with my theory of um, uh, use social media as a dialogue rather than a monologue. So you tell me, what's a monologue? Talking by yourself, talking. Uh, you're the person talking toward everyone. In a sense, like a speech, like a, speech yeah. a soliloquy, it's something that could be private, your thoughts and such a monologue. Or it could be, you know, I'm doing these classes, I'm talking to you, that could be sort of a monologue, but I do invite dialogue. I ask you, I, I ask the class, you, you, you talk back to me, you give me your opinions. So I'm saying use social media more as more of a dialogue than a monologue. We'll see the specific examples later, but that's going to be tweet stuff, but reply to people. Uh, comment on other people's content. Keep the dialogue going back and forth. Not a monologue that you just post something and never reply, never follow up or follow through. You want the back and forth. You can run social media, you can run it successfully as a monologue, but I usually see the big companies can get away with that. Nike never replies to the customers. Coca-Cola never replies. Chipotle, you know, these big companies don't really, depending on the company, don't really reply to people. Some of the more successful ones that really reach an audience, however, they do. Someone tweets to the company, they reply. Someone tweets something and then someone replies to that tweet, and the company replies to that tweet. They keep the dialogue going, back and forth. Why? In order to put a personal face on an uncaring company and to hopefully get more followers. Yes? So I haven't tried this for a few years, but I remember that, um, for instance, if somebody had a bad customer service experience with a company, they might tweet about it. Mm -hmm. And hopefully there would be somebody within that company monitoring tweets about the company and they would give faster response. I don't know if that's still true. Yeah, definitely. That's part of the dialogue that people can use, companies can use Twitter definitely as a way to do customer service. Um, someone, this, this is a full time job, social media marketer. Uh, our company does it for a few local businesses where we have access to all their social media accounts, and we've got it on our phones, and we've got it on our laptops, and we monitor this stuff. And when someone is complaining about the company, we jump in and try to, you know, fix the issue. So that's part of that dialogue. Definitely do it. Which networks would you say are normally monitored that way? All of them. You would want to do that. People can be active on all of these things. Facebook's got the largest market share of all of them, so you definitely want to keep up to date on that. Twitter has over 320 million users. That's a lot of complaints that could come in. Keep track of that. YouTube, sometimes we don't think of it as a social network, but that's a big social network with comments and all of that. And that's got probably around, by some estimates, 700 million users. So the short answer is monitor them all. Have your notifications turned on for all the networks that you're on top of it. Or else something is going to slip through the cracks and someone complained and you never dealt with it, and it could be detrimental in the future. So this is getting to the concept of uh, you want to be public with your content, but there is a value to using the private messaging. You have private messaging on Twitter, on YouTube, on Facebook. You've got a way to deal with customers privately, and that's perhaps the way to deal with the complaints. Someone complains publicly on Twitter, and then you move it over to private messages, get it all worked out so that the dirty laundry isn't being aired for everyone on the account. And it does work. A few years ago, I, uh, I took a trip to Las Vegas, and I flew Delta, and after it was over, we were flying back, and somewhere over Nevada and California somewhere, I got on the plane's Wi-Fi, and I, I checked my email and such, and Delta sent an email to everyone, sorry, your connecting flight from Los Angeles to San Diego has been canceled. So I was up in the air, and I was notified, my flight is canceled. This was a Friday um, on our trip back. So right away I knew what was going on. I started to tweet to Delta 
on Twitter, and I'm saying, hey, what's going on with my flight? It's canceled. I just got this email. What's going on? And they started to reply to me and say, well, we're sorry, this and that, and then it ended up being pretty hellish because what happened was there were no flights back down to San Diego. They put us on a bus Friday rush hour from Los Angeles to San Diego. The bus driver got lost at a certain point, and so I was complaining on Twitter the whole time, and eventually Delta gave me a free flight. I haven't used it because I don't like Delta anymore, but I got something out of it. So that's the worst case scenario. For you, I'm Victor's Bakery. You're a small business. Uh, someone buys your, bought your cupcake, and then they start to complain. I just bought this cupcake from Victor's Bakery, and it had a hair in it. Well, we're going to talk about monitoring these various things and dealing with them, because it's not just about the monologue of it. It's not just about what are you tweeting this week? What did you tweet today? What did you post on Facebook today? You have to check what's going on, check the dialogue, and deal with it. The positive tweets, the negative <coughs> tweets. And so, um, since this is an old account, I've already got five, uh, I've already got one follower. Uh, but assume that if you create an account, you got zero. And therefore, if we tweet anything, if we, if we post here on Twitter, tweet anything, we're tweeting this to all of our zero followers. No one is going to see this. So we'll talk about strategies, of course. Before that, there's always the, the chicken or the egg question, which comes first. Do I want to tweet to no one? Or do I want to build followers first, but I have no tweets? I have no content? So that's a catch-22 there. If, I'm, if I just start tweeting here and posting a lot of great stuff, no one knows I exist, I have no followers, I might be sort of tweeting to the, to the void, and no one's paying attention. You might feel I'm wasting my time. The opposite is, well, what if I go through these various strategies to try to get followers? Let me get followers and I'll start to tweet. The problem with that is that at this point, with this basic account I just created, I have nothing to entice people to follow me for. I have no tweets, so they can't see what I'm posting. My biography has not been filled in. They don't know what I'm about. My logo is not there. I'm an egg. I have no banner up there, so there's nothing to entice people to follow. I would recommend to first, uh, as we'll do this, we will fill in our profile and we will tweet to no one in particular about five times. I'll put out some content I'll put my best foot forward, put some content out there, and then try to get followers. I'm not going to catch a fish without bait. So the bait will be a fully set up profile with some tweets. So I don't want to be this egg anymore. I want to put my biography and such. What you need to do is click on the top right corner. If you're a brand new account, you have the egg icon. If you've already filled it in, your logo will be there. Look how small it is. Click on your icon menu and then click View Profile. This is what your account will look like for everyone that visits. Pretty empty. No enticement to click the Follow button. This is also the screen where you will see there's your Twitter address. We created the full name and we created the username. The username is what your Twitter address is. The username is the is the short name with no symbols and spaces. So whatever username you made, that's your address. Twitter.com slash whatever your username was. What I wrote in the full name appears right there, Victor's Bakery, with proper capitalization and spaces. And the thing about a username is you can set it up lowercase, uppercase, whatever you want, it doesn't matter. It's not case sensitive. I might have set this up, you know, as all lower cases like this, and that's the same as the upper cases. But I like to put upper cases because since we can't use spaces, the upper cases are useful to help it make help it be readable. When someone sees this and they can process it because it's not separate words, it's all run together, I like to put intercaps. That's the term, capitalization inside the word, intercaps within the words. Capital V, capital B, capital T, and that's more readable. 
So you're going back up and doing that now in, in the search bar? No, I'm just showing you that's the difference. In order oh, for you to okay. change that, you would go over to your, it's going to be in the settings. Okay. You would change that somewhere in the settings. And so that Twitter address, one thing that people forget is cross-pollination. People forget, why don't you share your Twitter link on Facebook once in a while? Why don't you share your YouTube link on Twitter once in a while? Why don't you cross-pollinate? People get caught up in being like in, in one silo, in, in one view, that I'm on Twitter, I'll only share stuff about Twitter. It's okay to share that YouTube video on your Twitter. It's okay to share that Twitter poll on your Facebook. You can cross-pollinate. All you need is your link to your tweet or your account, which is up there on the address. What I do want to do on this screen, however, is fill in my profile a little bit better. Uh, we won't have a lot of time to do it. You can do it on your own, but if you click Edit Profile, you can add a header photo. I don't have one handy, but I would like to use that space to brand my business. And what can you put there? Well, get the inspiration from, from again, who are you following? I'm going to go look at the Food & Wine account. They have very tasty pictures of salmon up there. Now, I don't like seafood, but that looks tasty. So get inspiration. Show your product, maybe. Let's see what else. Um, food, uh, New York Times Food. Check out their account. They've got a big old close-up of a nice-looking egg. So some more food. Let's say I go over to CNN, something off of the food. So this is interesting. They, on CNN, they've taken the space up here to remind you we're on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Vine, and Twitter. They designed that graphic probably in Photoshop. This is not any active link. You can't click on that and it'll take you there. That graphic up there is not active. It's just a graphic. They designed it to tell you we're also on Snapchat. Follow us there. We're also on Vine. So think about how you can use that space up there. Not just a photo of your product, but here's another bit of stealth branding to also guide them to Facebook, Vine, whatever. Let's just say for equal opportunity, let's look at Fox News. They've got their pundits. Here's the people behind the news. Um, there's their branding up there. Same thing here. Here's the personalities. Let's see our college. SDCE. Photos of the locations. Whatever you want to put up there, it's all good. But look at perhaps the competition. Um, what graphic they've got there to give them to give you yourself an idea. There are dimensions to this size. I don't know them off the top of my head, so what I would do is what is the Twitter header size. And somewhere there, I suppose the answer is 1,500 pixels by 500. The profile photo, it's going to be a wide panorama type of size. Let's say 1,500 by 500 pixels. I'll write that on my notes. Twitter header size, so the optimal size, 1,500 pixels by 500 pixels. Keep in mind, however, that that graphic will grow and shrink depending on the size of the person's monitor, and if they're on a mobile device, it'll be even smaller. So if you really put a lot of detail in there, keep in mind mobile devices, and mobile device traffic is has overtaken the desktop traffic now. More people are using a mobile device than a desktop. I get terrible reception in here, but I wanted to look at the um, CNN mobile Twitter. I'll do that later. But you want to put in an eye-catching graphic up there, again, to entice people to follow you. Someone will visit your profile, see what you're all about, and click follow.
best case scenario. Worst case, they do nothing. Again, profile photo at some point, put your logo there. You can change Victor's Bakery, that's the full name that can have spaces, capitalization, symbols, whatever. There's a spot for a bio. I believe you're limited to 160 characters. What you want to write in the biography is explaining what your company is about, but also think one step ahead. Think about this is a little spot to catch people's attention. Again, looking at the competition gives you an idea, perhaps, of what to write. What did food and wine write there? Inspiration served daily are social media terms. And a link, you can put active links in that biography. Guide people to different addresses. There's a spot for a website, but in the biography you can say, uh, visit our storefront on Main Street. And I go get a, go get a Google Map link, and I put the link here. That will become an active link. You can have more than one here. So you have a little more space for marketing. And you always want to think about, whenever you do any social media, uh, what's in it for the user. Why would the follower care? Why would the potential follower follow you? So you want to have that thought whenever you do any social media. Why are you posting this? Why are you sharing this? Which all goes back to, why are you on social media? That sort of lofty question should uh, should guide many of the things you do on social media. Even this biography that I'm writing. I could take this spot right here to write a little bit more to entice people why should they follow me. So I'm going to say here something like San Diego Bakery. Since 1989. Follow us for exclusive coupons. I'm going to be sharing a variety of things on Twitter. But once in a while, I'm going to share coupons that you can only find here. That'll be an enticement for people to follow me on Twitter, or at the very least, to come back to my account once in a while. It'll just be easier for them to follow. So how can I entice people to follow? Always think about that. How can I entice followers? How can I entice clicks? How can I entice sales? And yes, that is a difficult thing to figure out for every type of business or online endeavor. That is a big discussion about marketing. They, they have college degrees, bachelor's degrees, master's degrees in marketing. Obviously we can't cover all of the bases in a five-week course, but I'm always going to be hitting these concepts of why would someone follow you? Why would someone buy something? What do you have to offer? what's unique, what's different than every other bakery in San Diego on Twitter. And this can be changed as many times as you want. We'll see later when someone searches on Twitter, whatever keywords they put into Twitter, those keywords could come from here as well. So if you're putting in these keywords that people can search for, they could find you and therefore follow you. So someone might be searching on, on Twitter, bakery coupons, and I've got those keywords. There's a location, so this again is to help you get found by local people if you need locals to find you. Maybe I ship my products globally, so it doesn't matter what I put here. I can get fun about it. I can just simply put USA, and I can put you know over there, and it'll take that. Mm -hmm. You can put whatever you want on this. Some people get funny. I see sometimes people write planet Earth. So that works. But if you put an actual location, that's also to help you get found by people in that area. And I just learned that there's an over England. And I will add San Diego. And then a website here. So I'll put in my, my home page.
That's good enough. But what's better about the website link is, again, what's different, what's exclusive, what will entice people. Um, so I could guide people here. I could have victorsbakery.com slash twitteroffer.html. I created what is known as a landing page. I've got a page that I designed on my website, exclusive for people on Twitter. You can only get to that page if you know the link, and you're going to get that link from Twitter. It's a landing page. Let's make a note here. Take advantage of landing pages. Landing pages are uh, pages on your website you cannot get to via normal means. Whenever you get that email in your inbox from that store, like I, I follow, I subscribe to the Fry's Electronics newsletter, and every week I love it and I hate it because I get these newsletters with all these great things I want to buy at Fry's. And I have to be strong and say, maybe next time. But I get these uh, these newsletters, and they have links. They have landing pages. Follow this link from that email for your exclusive offers. So you cannot get to that page on the Fry's Electronics website without the link from the email that you have to subscribe to. So that landing page. Landing pages are pages that you're not going to find on the main menu of a site. You're going to get to them via a tweet, via an email, maybe over the radio. Someone says, visit us at victor.com slash radio offer. That's a landing page. You have to create these on your page. We obviously can't talk about how to do that in this class. But you have to create a page on your site that you lead people to. You guide people there. Take advantage of that in social media for exclusivity. No, you need to have a website and the website software and all of that. So here, I assume I created in WordPress or Dreamweaver or whatever, I created a page on my site. And I just copy and paste the link, and you can only get to that link via Twitter. Landing page. There's a little bit of branding I can do via theme color. Not a lot of colors to choose from, but if you know your color code, you can add the color here, your color formula. So if you know your color formula, you've got the basic colors. And if you make any changes, remember to click Save. So you do want to do the branding on your business as complete as possible, as soon as possible. That's one of the two steps you want to do before you try to get followers. the next one here in a moment. Now we want to put some content on our Twitter account, on our Twitter profile. We want some tweets so that when someone stumbles upon my account or finds my account, they see, oh, this account is tweeting about these things. This is interesting to me. I will follow. Right now I have zero tweets. I have a beautiful profile, but no tweets. They can tell that they seem to be some kind of bakery, but I don't really see content. So I would say, yeah, five to ten tweets. You can do all five of them today. You can do one every day for the rest of the week. You can do three today, two tomorrow, whatever. I'm just saying you need to put content. Yes, you have zero followers, therefore no one is seeing this. But this is laying the foundation to get followers later. I'll go back to my home screen. 
and you will always have, on whatever screen you're at, you'll always have a tweet button at the top right. If you go back to the home screen, you also see it at the top. It says, what's happening? You can share a picture. Let's say I'll skip that for the moment. Uh, let's say we'll just click what's happening, which again, this is the same as clicking the tweet button at the top right. You click what's happening. You have different things you can share. You can share plain old text. You can say something like, hello everyone. Happy to be on Twitter. Again, you can do this if you like or not. If this is a fake account, real account, doesn't matter. I'm just going to write this. Hello everyone, happy to be on Twitter. Tweet. That's one down one tweet out there. Honestly though, it's not the best tweet because again, thinking about in terms of about what's in it for the follower, the potential follower, the potential customer. This is so generic, it can apply to any kind of account. I didn't say anything useful really for people to be enticed to respond or to follow. And this takes practice about what's a good tweet. I'll give advice, of course. But, okay, let me try again. Let's say we can delete your tweets, of course, but let's say this is my first tweet, uh, and I want to think more in terms about how to entice people to follow. So I'll say, hello world, we're on Twitter. Follow us for great food photos and exclusive videos. That's better than my first one. Very generic, more specific. What's in it for people? Get uh, Follow us and you'll get exclusive stuff. You'll see exclusive tweets. Can you delete tweets after you send it? Yeah, whenever you post anything you will see your your three dots on a tweet and then you can go here and delete the tweet. Do you recommend having white space at the end of a tweet to make it easier to retweet? Um, no, I don't really worry about it. I, I like to put what I want to put, and then when someone retweets it, they can choose how to retweet it. And the modern way for retweeting now is actually Twitter now lets a person uh, write as much as they want. If they choose the retweet, now you can write as much as you want here without having to deal with what I've already written. The old Twitter, I had to deal with what's already been written and add my own missive, and I had to kind of juggle that space. Now Twitter lets you write your own 140 characters on top of what's already there. So by now we should know, with 10 years of Twitter, we should know that tweets are limited to 140 characters. You have 140, 140 characters to put out all your wisdom or your products or whatever, and as you're typing you're going to see that counter going down, and then, of course, at a certain point, it starts to get red, you're running out of space, and then eventually you run out of space, and you can keep tweet, you can keep writing when you've run out of space, but notice it says now you've, tweet, you've written too much, and you can't tweet. So in 140 characters, you have to get out your message. And then my, that might seem like a really small space, but the cool thing is that Twitter lets you attach links. It's not obvious here, but you can attach links. You can say, for example, we've got a sale this Sunday. Get the coupon here and use it ASAP. And I will go off to my website where I've made a landing page, and I'll copy and paste the link from my website That'll be an active link. Twitter um, doesn't count the total length of the tweet. When, I mean, the total length of the link in your tweet. When it recognizes that it's a that it's a that it's an address, notice it's going down here, 58 characters. Pictures.bakery.com. It recognizes it's an address, and now whatever the length of my link is, it'll stop counting it. So I can have a huge link, and it still will count it with the original space. So 
Does it shorten it then? It also shortens it. It uses its own shortening system, so you'll see a lot of addresses that say t.co slash whatever. That's their link shortener, tco. So it'll take your huge link and shorten it, so you don't have to worry about the length of your tweet with links. Very much. And I can add multiple links, although each one will take some amount of space, but I can have multiple huge addresses that I put in two huge addresses and I still have 29 characters. So I'm saying here you don't you're not limited to just text. You can add links. You can add multiple links. Be careful though about adding multiple links because that's a that's a that's the hallmark of a spammer. A lot of links on a tweet makes you look like a spammer because that's what the, the spammers do. They tweet something, they put three links hoping someone will click for some reason and then they've ensnared you. So I would recommend one link per tweet. You can break these rules of course but I would say try for one link per tweet. Tips to avoid looking like a spammer. We'll talk about hashtags a little deeper a little bit later, but I'll mention here um, no more than three hashtags. Because spammers, guess what? They put seven hashtags and teenagers. You don't want to be either. So up to three hashtags. We'll talk about what hashtags are in a moment in more detail. Um, but you can put links, you can use hashtags. Notice what we can also do on our tweets, we can attach photos. Um, studies show that when you share on social media, multimedia, which are pictures and sound and such videos, those get more of a result than simply text shares. If you simply share a link or share some text, uh, your tweet might not get as much action as if you had also added a picture or a video or a sound. I'll show you how to add all of those in a moment. But here we've got add a picture. Just to see how this works, I can click I can click add a photo. We've got some sample photos if you'd like to use them just for practice. When you add a photo you can scroll to the top of the panel here and go to our pictures on the left we have sample pictures. There is a limit, I believe, of three megabytes per picture. So that's a pretty big picture, actually. So you can attach a picture. If you noticed, I had a moment ago 54 characters. I attached a picture and now I've got 30. So pictures do take up space, but how much was that? We went from 54 to 30. It took a few characters for our picture, but we can attach up to four pictures, and each subsequent picture does not take any more characters. It'll make a simple photo album I can attach up to four photos without any more reduction in our character count. Uh, 
I wouldn't really say there's anything detrimental to pictures. From my experience, you can add one or four pictures. Uh, but what I would say about pictures, use original and relevant pictures to avoid looking like a spammer. Use your own pictures, not that one that you found on Google. Shoot your own photos, create your own pictures, don't use other people's pictures. Um, it's very easy to share other people's pictures on Twitter, of course, on all of these networks. But as often as possible, you want to use your own original photos, your own original content. Let's say you're not a photographer. Uh, you, you don't have a, a camera or you don't have f uh, photos of your products. Again, I do not recommend that you go to Google or Yahoo or Bing and just search for something. You can often run into copyright problems by simply searching. So I'm on Google. I want to share a picture of a cupcake. I search cupcake. I find a cupcake. I'm going to use that cupcake. No, don't do this. Don't go to the search engines and look for a picture and use it. You have to assume, and even though we've had decades of the opposite, we have to assume everything online is someone's property, is, is copyrighted. Someone created it, someone owns it. Worst case scenario, you use someone's picture, here come the lawyers, because you stole their property. Yes, a picture on the internet that I cannot touch is property. It's intellectual property. So I highly recommend for you to not search to look up pictures unless you are specific and search for cupcake stock image. So the keyword is stock image or royalty free image or public domain image. So if you're looking for something attach public domain, or royalty-free, or stock image that will hopefully guide you toward the pictures that are okay for you to use. These are pictures that are not going to get you into trouble if you use them. Unfortunately, you will still get pictures mixed into the results that don't follow this. So what I recommend instead go to websites that specifically focus on those types of pictures. One that I really like is called Pixabay. P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. Pixabay. There are not going to be a billion pictures here, like a Google search, but there are going to be hundreds of thousands of pictures that are free, high quality for you to use. Because even if you search for stock images, and you find the perfect stock image in the fine print it may say not approved for commercial purposes and you never read it and you use the picture and you tweet something about selling something you violated the terms so instead of having that possibility go to a website like this where it is totally safe for everything you want to do these pictures that they give you here super high quality, you can use them on the website, on Twitter, you could print them out poster size and put them right on your shop and they're okay for you to for you, for you to use at this point because we're on the site that focuses on this. Anywhere else besides this, I would be wary. Again, you're not gonna find millions of them. Let me type in cupcake. What do I get? I'm going to avoid the first line because these are sponsored. After this, I get five pages of results, and I will probably find the perfect cupcake photo that is okay for me to use. I won't get in trouble for it. It's high quality, meaning I can print it. I can use it on any website I want. I can use it in my app, and I'm okay to do so. So use original and relevant pictures. or use sites like pixabay.com which focus on these types of okay images. And there's some other ones there. Does anyone know of any other um, photo sites in this vein that you might want to share? Yes, 
Haven't heard of that one. Let's take a quick look. You said graphicstock.com? Graphicstock.com. Um, we have Reader Enjoy unlimited downloads of high quality royalty free photos and other design elements. One year unlimited downloads for $99. So, um, from what I see very briefly, it might be valuable, although. There is a cost here to sign up. Pixabay doesn't, but this might be a very good price for a whole year of access. Question? Um, well, uh, another, another website that I know is sure. Birch, the Creative Commons, which is for mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, it's basically just a gateway to the other feature, feature search engine. Yes. <laughs> but they, they uh, you can specify you want to use it for commercial purposes or you want to use it and change it. Mm -hmm. This is a very good one. Creative Commons is a whole huge repository of, of images and content that are safer for you to use in copyright situations and such. And so here's the search screen of Creative Commons. You can specify the kinds of images and if they're okay for commercial purposes or not. So this is a this is a like a super search engine that searches other places for images that are okay. Let me put that in our notes here. We've got search Creative Commons and we've also got the graphic stock. Finding it now, but um, Microsoft has a website where you can get all kinds of beautiful photos for free. Hmm. Yeah, we'd we'd have to look up the address, but uh, I'm sure there's some sort of Microsoft stock repository that we can find. Um, so for us, really, we want to get these images out of the right places just to be safe. Uh, I can attach, attach pictures. Let me cancel this. What I can also attach, this is new for the new generation, we can attach animated GIFs. So animated GIFs have made a big comeback. These are simply little graphics that animate. And uh, Twitter has added this feature, a built-in search feature, right inside of Twitter for you to search for some animation. So, you know, if we, for some reason, if we want, uh, let's say, the ew emotion, here it'll show you a bunch of ew reactions. And then I can attach that photo, and then I'm going to attach the animated graphic of you to my tweet. Obviously, I don't want that for my for my yummy baked goods, uh, but I'm just showing the example here that I can attach animations. I can search, see what we get for cupcake. These uh, these are curated, so I don't believe you should be able to see any not safe for work images here. Um, and so I'm searching cupcake and. No, maybe I'll attach this one. And so I'll have an animation on my on my tweet. That did take a few characters, 24 characters. Um, but that's another way to share. Another way to um, to get attention for your content and hopefully entice followers. Another item that we can add is the poll. This is very basic. There's other ones that I like better. I'll mention that one in a moment. Um, what's it called before I forget? Okay. So uh, there's another one that I like a little bit better. I'll mention that in a moment. But this built-in one, you add a poll. You can add, I think, up to five choices, four choices. And then uh, what's the length? Up to one week. It's very basic. If you choose a poll, you can then no longer attach a picture or an animation. So I think these are kind of boring, but this is a way for you to ask. Um, what's your favorite cake, chocolate, etc.? Chocolate, vanilla, uh, strawberry, etc. So you can uh, you can attach items to the um, 
to the poll, the link that's only one week. Share that. And polls are cool because this really goes into that concept of the dialogue, the dialogue on social media. And these work better once you've gotten more followers, although people can vote on it even if they're not a follower. But these are going to work better. You might be disappointed early on. You're going to be putting all of these polls, and no one's answering them because you got two followers. But once you've got 100 followers, 20 followers, 1,000 followers, then you'll get more results because you'll have people actually seeing your content to engage. And then we also have location. Now, mine says disabled here. But if you go through the process of enabling it, the point of adding a location is, again, more people use mobile devices. So if they're following you on Twitter, they're out and about, they're on their Twitter, and then they see you tweeted something that says, sale this Saturday, in store only. And if you attach the location, it will get a map. The person will see a map on your tweet that they can click on to get driving directions to go to your store. So obviously location is not useful for everyone, especially um, if your business does not have a physical location. Can you edit it once you've posted and add the location after? No, that's the big thing about Twitter's character, that once you post a tweet, you can no longer edit it. What you would have to do is delete it and write it again. Yes? When you Kind of location when you enable location, does it enable the location of where your mobile phone is at the moment or what's on your profile? Uh, it'll, it, it'll be the location of your device. So that way you can, uh, you know, you, it'll, it kind of knows a little bit here. Because I'm on a desktop, it doesn't fully know it. But if I was on my phone, it would zero in a little bit better. And then I can also put in, you know, zip codes and such or actual locations. So it is based on your device. But des desktops don't have the GPS, so it's not working very well here. All right, so um, those are the different kinds of things that we can share. Uh, and the thing about this class and a lot of my other marketing classes is I can teach and I can talk about these concepts in general but not all of them apply to your business. Maybe we need different approach for your company. So exactly what to write, I can't exactly teach that, even though you will see plenty of articles out there that will tell you this kind of poster, that kind of poster, this kind of thing. But you won't know until you try it. That's why I'm saying you want five to ten tweets. Think of different things to share. You will then start to see statistics you will start to see what got a lot of impressions. Because even though you might have zero followers, Twitter is still going to try to get your tweet out to people. It'll be more effective the more you use Twitter. But you will get more impressions even if you've only got a few followers, because Twitter's trying to help to some degree. And so if you share a variety of content, See, you know, throw something at the wall and see what sticks. See what works. Different things, different posts, different links. Vary your tone of voice. You know, write something a little more colloquial or write more stoic or just put content out there. Five to ten tweets in different contents and styles and times of day. That has a factor as well. But you won't know this until you do it. People then ask, what's the best time to tweet? I don't know. It depends on your business and your clientele. Perhaps with your clientele, the best time to tweet is between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. But for someone else, the best time is between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. So you won't know this until you try it. Let's say at this point I will share something. And something else. T-G-I-T. But uh, cookies. I want to share stuff. There's also the the, the larger discussion um, about a marketing plan and strategy and such. 
which I go into much more detail in my SEO class. The search engine optimization class, we talk about a marketing strategy, a company profile, all of that stuff that guides everything you do online. I touch on it in various ways in this class, but again, there's so much of this material out there, it's separated into separate classes. I recommend you take them if you're able to. And what I'm getting at is that don't you think that McDonald's has a marketing plan? Don't you think that Nike has a plan? Chipotle, this college, our company, all of these companies that are on social media have a plan. Just like before social media there was a plan of what kind of poster to put up on the wall, what kind of radio ad to do every month, what kind of TV spot to put. There's a plan to all of this. Just because it's intangible and it's just pixels on the screen doesn't mean to not think about that. Because even though it's free and you can tweet as many times as you want, any time of day, as many times as you want, don't waste your time. Use it in an effective way to share content always thinking about what's in it for the user, what's in it for a potential follower. Yes, of course, I want to sell something, but how can I sell it the best way? And the more you do it, the more results you get. I didn't plan this. Notice this. I have a notification. Something's happening from what I've tweeted so far. I did not pay anyone to, to tweet at me at, uh, at uh, 826. I'm just using Twitter. Something's happening. I got a notification. I haven't checked it. It may be good or bad. But what I'm showing you is I'm being active. Something happened. Notification. Ellen Abel retweeted you. I don't know if that's any of you in the class. If you did it, thank you. Or if it's some random person on Twitter, but someone retweeted me. We're going to get into all of this terminology soon. But I got some interaction. I have I just got into Twitter and something's happening at least. Uh, so it's a big world to, to talk about, and the more you do it, the better. The more active you are, the better, the dialogue that you have. We'll talk about why this is good or bad, but uh, we're going to take one more break. Maybe think of a few things to tweet. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about retweets and favorites and commenting and all of that stuff. So it's... 8.27, we'll be back at uh, 8.37, 10 minutes, and we'll learn some more. Any general questions before the break? Okay, let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 8.38, and we'll go on.